I mean, what did you think my email said? Hi, it's Hillary. I really screwed up on Benghazi today. Please. <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday. I was born 67 years ago, and I have been planning on being president ever since. There will be no mistakes in my rise to the top if I decide to run. Who knows? It's one of the best openings of SNL in a long time. All right, from the entertainment value of watching the big dogs on the right starting to gnaw at each other's heels to some sage advice for Republicans on the latest Hillary affair. Let's dig in. Welcome back political commentator and author Linda Tirado. And we're now joined by Republican strategist and contributor at the website Ricochet, designed for conservative conversation, Rick Wilson. Rick, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Linda, we didn't get a chance to ask you about this, so let's go ahead and get back started on Hillary Clinton now. And again, what a great opening by Saturday Night Live. It was absolutely going to land as one of their best of all time. But in this whole issue right now, is it fair to say that Hillary Clinton, though, has just shown a new level of smugness that even people who know the Clintons didn't think that she was capable of? No, absolutely not. I would say that Hillary Clinton is operating in exactly the way that Hillary Clinton has always operated and will always operate. Um, you know, and more to the point, this is this is inside baseball, um, right? This is where we all get the popcorn out and start watching both sides tear each other apart and we cheer for our team and we enjoy the other team's destruction. Um, but, you know, voters aren't paying attention to whether a former first lady with presidential security on her servers should or should not have used State Department security. Um, you know, the, the issue is is so minute um, as far as as its understanding in the broader public um, that you know no it's no different than anything she's done before and it's going to go away and it will be an old story and Republicans will keep bringing it up for you know time and all eternity just like they bring up Whitewater just like they bring up you know all of these other things because hating Hillary Clinton is actually a pastime of Republicans <laughs> just like I really enjoy it when John Boehner says something dumb in public you know like I, I love it when that happens and so do Republicans you know we're playing the game Rick, Linda brings up a great comment here. Voters aren't paying attention. It would seem that the insiders that you talk to will say, absolutely, she did something wrong. Absolutely, she's smug. But come election time, people will still vote for Hillary. It'll all go away. Do you believe that? You know, I have a lot of doubts about that. The upside of being Hillary Clinton is that your brand is established and everyone knows you. The downside of being Hillary Clinton is you're Hillary Clinton and your brand is absolutely locked in stone. And that brand right now has just been reinforced again for voters, which is insular, paranoid, you know, always always skating along the edge of disclosure in anything they ever do, and, and, and locked into this consistent pattern that's happened over 30 years of public life for these folks, where, where they are always one step ahead of the law, where they are always, you know, ducking out of disclosure, where they're always ducking out of, uh, of transparency, and, and that, is a, that is a characteristic of the Clinton brand that I think folks in an age of transparency that, it, that is, where it's, transparency is increasingly important. I think that is something that it's really hard for them to get over. This didn't help her yesterday. I mean, the most disappointed folks yesterday weren't, weren't Republicans because we didn't roll our eyes and go, oh my God, this is all over. It was Democrats who were terrified that this is their only horse and they're going to be spending the next year and some uh, explaining away, you know, crisis du jour, scandal du jour from the Clintons. Okay, but then, then st sticking on that point, Rick, let me, let me stick on that point. Is it then fair to say that many people believe that the Republicans right now should not go after Mrs. Clinton? Don't do it. Don't start one of these full frontal, uh, frontal assaults, rather. Let her basically disintegrate on her own. Would you agree with that? Well, that was just a lot of the advice I gave in Politico the other day. And, and the argument I say is I want us to be ninjas, not clowns. A lot of times we get... We, we fight louder and louder and louder with the Clintons and not smarter and smarter. They've been very good over 30 plus years of handling the way Republicans have attacked them in the past, which is why my counsel is to be more measured and, and to push them to give answers rather than for us trying to, to sell a predetermined conclusion of malfeasance. I think if there you is can a get Republicans to be measured about the Clintons, I will personally bake you a plate of cookies. Like that Listen, will be a, a <laughs> defeat, unlike anything that I have one, seen before. One at a time. What flavor? I, I'm, I'm just I, whatever you want. <laughs> okay, whatever was, you name it, I got it. I, I just wanted to make sure because if we're talking about cookies here, we got to get onto this here. But there's another thing here that we're not talking about, and that is the foreign donations that are coming into the Clinton Foundation, which so many people okay. have been talking about for quite some time. And I got to tell you, it would seem, and Linda, I'll throw this to you first. Some people would say, 
Oh, wait a minute. The Clintons are more than happy to do with the emails right now because this will take all the attention away from the Clinton Foundation. And that's where many people believe the bigger story is. I'm actually one of those people. I thought Andrea Mitchell gave a great question where, you know, you start this press conference with the talk about gender. So how do you justify taking, you know, all of this money from these governments that oppress women so heavily? And, and it was Clinton's an answer, answer was where she absolutely where did not Hood. answer the question. It was an answer where well, Mrs. Actually, Clinton did not answer the question in the least. She, she completely ignored she, it. No, she did. No. She said, we take this money and we do good things with it better than they would do with it, um, which, you know, OK, fair. Um, but that doesn't actually talk about what's the vetting process, which governments are involved, things like that. That, as far as I'm c concerned, you know, emails one way or the other. OK, fine. That's inside baseball. What foreign governments you're taking money from for your foundation while you are running for president unofficially is a big deal. Are we missing it, you think, Rick, on that? Is that the point that we need to be focusing on more than all these emails and servers? Well, look, the, 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 the foreign donations to the Clintons are, are the iceberg issue. The, the email story is probably 10% of this question. Underneath the surface, there are a huge number of relationships and obligations that Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton have, have incurred in their, in their building of the foundation. These folks look at the foundation as part of their legacy plan and part of their, part of their overall empire. And when we look at the money that's coming in from a variety of the Emirates and from a variety of other countries where, where the treatment of women, where the treatment of gays, where the treatment of, uh, of, of, of religious and ethnic minorities is way off our standard, it's going to get thin, I think, just saying, oh, well, we take their money and do good things with it. After a point, that's not, you know, that's, that's, that's a thin argument, I think. And, and I also think that Americans are going to ask themselves, are we going to elect a president who is, you know, in the pocket of a foreign power, not just because of some, you know, attenuated relationship, but because a direct financial contribution to her and her husband and daughter's foundation. I think there's a lot of, a lot of risk and peril there for Mrs. Clinton and, and, and for the Clinton brand overall. I think there's an awful lot of peril for both sides here, actually, when you think about it. Not only that, but both issues here, because I think we're just getting started on hearing it. And quite frankly, when we actually do get down to the Clinton Foundation, I think that's going to make for some very interesting reporting very quickly. Rick Wilson, I want to thank you very much. And by the way, an excellent article, too, where you pointed out a lot of these things in Politico. We always look forward to having you back on the show again. Linda Torado, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. All right, everybody, take care. The controversial religious leader who issues an apology but actually may not be all that sorry for the conversation that he created. Actually, what he did was take out a full-page ad in the New York Times and use the word genocide against the government official. Well, he's decided to apologize, at least in a manner of speaking. That and more when we continue right here, where we question everything on Midpoint.